a very uncomfortable uh, question to ask for many Western powers. Uh, would Ukrainian troops, because technically, um, for example, during the Second World War, the Red Army didn't stop when they reached the pre-war Soviet border, so to say. They, they went all the way to Berlin. Um, would Ukrainian troops would be would they would be willing to take the fight to Russian territory? Would they would they cross it? Naturally, in Russia's military doctrine, uh, there is uh, the right to use uh, nuclear weapons uh, in the defense of of their own territory. But at the same time, uh, with the annexation of uh, these four regions of Ukraine, technically Kherson, uh, Zaporizhia. Uh, are in the, uh, in the eyes of the Russian state uh, just as much Russian territory as Moscow or St. Petersburg. Uh, but that didn't uh, create a situation in, in which they use nuclear weapons when, when they lost <laughs> control of the city of Kherson, for example. Um, so it could also be that the Ukrainians, they will not cross the border with, with Russia, but that the war will continue, that the Russians will launch additional attacks uh, that they will continue to try to take Ukrainian territory. That, that is uh, uh, also a possibility. But if we look at peace negotiations, uh, well, in that, in that case, it would be for the Russians the only thing that would be left to negotiate about, because there would be no territorial changes, uh, would be reparations uh, for, uh, for, for Ukraine, uh, for uh, Russian war criminals to, to face charges. Uh, naturally, uh, the personal position of Vladimir Putin would be uh, very interesting to see what, uh, what, what, what demands the Ukrainian side will, would put forward in such a scenario. And uh, the Russians, they, they aren't good at taking losses. No. Um, in uh, 1917, uh, after having uh, being beaten on the Eastern Front by uh, by the Germans, uh, the Russian Revolution uh, started uh, with uh, also a, a severe defeat in Afghanistan, uh, from which the Russians pulled out in 1989, uh, and the general feeling that they had lost uh, the Cold War with uh, the US, with this economic collapse that had taken place in the Soviet Union, uh, you finally had the collapse of the Soviet Union as a political construct. And then in the 90s, this general malaise in, in Russia, both economical but also mentally. Um, so th it is quite a possibility that uh, a lost war here would either end very poorly for Vladimir Putin himself, uh, maybe for the Russian Federation as a political construct, uh, and yes, the question is what, what would China do in such a moment? As you mentioned, there, there was this meeting recently in Moscow and there was a video of Xi Jinping uh, saying goodbye to Putin just as he was about to head for the airport. And he said that uh, the changes that are taking place right now haven't, haven't happened in a hundred years. And uh, when we are together, uh, we can drive these changes. So. It does look like uh, the Chinese, uh, they have attached their own, um, I wouldn't say their own future, but they are definitely on the Russian side. They are also trying to avoid uh, to be struck by Western sanctions as they are biding their time. Uh, they, they hope to develop their economy a little bit more on the expense of uh, Western economies and uh, build up their army, which is still far from uh, being able to compete with, uh, with that of the US or, and especially of NATO as a whole. Uh, so so they, they don't want to sever economic ties with the West just yet. They definitely don't want to enter in, into uh, a military conflict with the West. Uh, they are trying to stay out of it for as long as possible, but at the same time, they don't want to see um, a Russian collapse. So uh, it is quite certain that there is some there are some efforts being made uh, behind behind the scenes by by, by yes. The and interestingly, I think I agree that, that President Zelensky has well or said that she is very welcome to come to Kiev to have a chat. Yes, even though Russia has rejected mm. the she peace uh, proposals, mm. Zelensky hasn't exactly accepted them mm. either, but has actually been open to uh, she visiting Kiev, which is quite interesting. 
It is a strategy that uh, Ukraine started using uh, after the annexation of Crimea in 2014. Uh, they tried to attract as much uh, Chinese investments as possible into the country, uh, thinking that if they did so, then uh, China would be able to uh, exert pressure on Russia not to attack, not to bomb these Chinese factories and other investments made. Uh, so the Ukrainians, they have seen China as a potential force that could uh, that could hold hold uh, Russia back, and uh, they still have some hopes that China could play this role. But at the same time, there have been many statements since the war, uh, during which uh, top politicians, Ukrainian politicians, such as uh, Oleksandr Mereshko, the the chair of the parliamentary. Um, a committee for uh, for foreign affairs uh, keeps making statements that that counter uh, Chinese narratives. Uh, he has been a very vocal supporter of Taiwan, for example. Uh, so there is also some dissolution in in in, in Ukraine when it comes to China. But um, Adam, as usual, the clock has defeated us, so I'm going to have to ask you to pause there. But we will pick it up next time. There we are. I've had to interrupt Adam almost in mid-sentence, but fear not if you join us next time on Poland Daily History, as we hope you will, we'll pick up the story. Until then, thank you for watching.